You've done this a thousand times. Grab the cold stick from the fridge. Watched it soften on warm toast. Spread it without thinking. But here's what you've never considered. That golden block exists because someone made a mistake 10,000 years ago. A mistake so perfect that every civilization since has tried to recreate it. How did spilled milk become the world's most beloved fat? Somewhere around 8,000 BCE, a herder in ancient Africa strapped a sheepskin pouch of milk to his pack animal. The journey was long. The terrain was rough. By the time he stopped to drink, something strange had happened. The liquid had transformed. Thick golden clumps floated in watery liquid. He tasted it anyway. Delicious. That accidental discovery would reshape human nutrition forever. The constant jostling had done something no one understood. It had turned ordinary liquid into solid fat. Word spread along trade routes. Within centuries, nomadic tribes across the Near East were deliberately recreating the accident. They hung pouches from tree branches and swung them for hours. They strapped bags to saddles and rode until the milk changed. Nobody knew why it worked. They only knew it did. Here's what's actually happening inside that pouch. Milk contains billions of fat globules. Think of them as microscopic water balloons, each wrapped in a thin membrane of proteins. These membranes keep fat suspended in liquid. When you agitate milk violently, those membranes crash into each other. Hard enough, often enough, and they rupture. Fat spills out. Loose fat finds other loose fat. They stick together. Keep agitating and small clumps become larger clumps. Eventually, you have solid chunks floating in liquid. The chunks are butter. The liquid is buttermilk. Scientists call this phase inversion. Cream starts as fat floating in water. Butter ends as water trapped in fat. The whole system flips inside out. But violence alone doesn't make butter. Temperature matters just as much. Fat globules contain two types of fat. Saturated fat stays solid at room temperature. Unsaturated fat stays liquid. When cream is too warm, all the fat is liquid. Membranes rupture, but nothing clumps. Fat just disperses back into the liquid. When cream is too cold, fat is too solid. Membranes won't break no matter how hard you shake. The sweet spot sits between 10 and 15 degrees Celsius. Cold enough for fat crystals to form inside each globule. Warm enough for liquid fat to leak when membranes break. Those crystals act like tiny hooks. When two ruptured globules collide, crystals snag each other. This is why butter making fails on hot summer days. So if butter spoils within days and Mediterranean climates made it impractical, why did civilizations without refrigeration treasure it for 10,000 years? The answer wasn't survival, it was religion. Ancient Greeks and Romans called butter barbaric, food for unwashed northern tribes. They had olive oil. Why bother with unstable animal fat? But those northern tribes understood something the Romans missed. The transformation from liquid to solid seemed supernatural. No one could explain why agitation turned milk into golden chunks. Ancient Sumerians offered butter to fertility goddesses. Hindus still use clarified butter in sacred rituals. What started as accidental chemistry became proof of divine intervention. While Romans mocked butter eaters, the Irish were burying it in bogs. Literally, they packed butter into wooden barrels and sank it into the peat. Some of these buried caches have been discovered 3,000 years later. 
still edible. The bog environment is cold acidic and oxygen free. Bacteria can't survive. The butter can't oxidize. It's a natural refrigerator that predates electricity by millennia. Archaeologists have found over 400 bog butter deposits across Ireland and Scotland. Were they hiding wealth from raiders? Preserving surplus for famine? Offering tribute to pagan gods? Probably all three. The practice continued into medieval times when butter was so valuable it paid taxes and rent. Here's the part that surprises everyone. The butter your great-grandmother made tasted nothing like what's in your refrigerator. For most of history, cream sat for days before churning. Bacteria fermented milk sugars into lactic acid. The cream soured. When churned, this fermented cream produced cultured butter. Tangy. Complex. Almost cheesy. Modern sweet cream butter skips fermentation entirely. Fresh cream goes straight to churning within hours. The result is milder, cleaner, blander. The shift happened in the 1870s when centrifugal separators made rapid processing possible. Efficiency 1. Flavor lost. European butter still requires 82% fat versus American 80%. That 2% changes how it melts and browns. Every stick in your refrigerator carries an invisible history. A nomad's mistake became deliberate technique. Technique became sacred ritual. Ritual became industrial process. The chemistry never changed. Microscopic membranes still rupture. Fat still clings to fat. Water still separates from solid, but the meaning transformed completely. What started as survival became symbol. What started as accident became art. That golden block isn't just solidified cream. It's 10,000 years of humans learning to transform the ordinary into something extraordinary. Agitation, temperature, time, the same three variables work today as they did for ancient herders. Next time you unwrap that cold stick, you'll see it differently. Not just breakfast, not just cooking fat. You're holding the oldest processed food still made the same way. Agitation, temperature, time. Three variables that ancient herders stumbled into and modern factories still can't improve. The nomad who forgot his milk couldn't have imagined grocery store aisles. But he'd recognize exactly what's inside. Some accidents are too perfect to fix. What's in your fridge right now 